Welcome to Fresh One, the BD Outdoors podcast brought to you by the Coronado Brewing Company. Stay coastal. Yeah, cool. All right, guys. We're here today with uh, the owners of Kicker Fishing, uh, Randy and Skyler. We'll let them talk about themselves. Also joined uh, alongside by my coworker, Ira Waldman. Yep. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Glad to have you. Um, I think just to kind of get started, maybe giving a little background on your company and, and what you guys do, the products you guys make, and um, just kind of stuff like that would be would be interesting. So why don't you go ahead? All right. Well, um, Kicker Fishing Brand, uh, as you know it now to this day, um, I've been running it for almost nine years now, um, and it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we we actually bought the brand from a guy named Donnie Baker. He started the jig in 1998. He designed it in 1998. Sorry, and he had a patent on this little thing because it swims so well. He thought it was so amazing. Um, and I gotta go back a little bit. So I actually, <laughs> I bought a house, right? And in my house, is it's a two-story loft, okay? And these places are dual zone for business and residential. And so I was like, I gotta start a brand, okay? And I was really excited about this. And at this time I was uh, good friends with Justin Hugron. I still am good friends with him, but we, were, we, we did a trip down to the Sea of Cortez to go fish Cabrilla which is really fun, by the way. Um, and while we were on our way down there, we're like, wouldn't it be so cool to start like a fishing brand? Cause we, you know, we had two different backgrounds. He's a sales guy. He was doing uh, sales repping for Brixton at the time. And I'm a designer by trade. I work at ad agency, like make, try to make things look cool, you know? And so we were like, well, maybe we could, you know, have a, just a different look and feel. And we didn't see what we liked to attach ourselves to in the industry, you know? So we just thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun to start a brand. And we were like going through all the ideas and the options and all these fun things to do like, oh, maybe we could do swim baits and we could do this and that and this. And it's like almost a kicker kind of fell in our lap. Um, as we're talking about this, a couple months went by and his good friend, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. He was actually trying to buy a uh, kicker and he actually found out it was for sale through Craigslist of all places, right? <laughs> and so a little backstory on kicker. So they started in 1998, they then, uh, you know, doing pretty good. The recession came 2008. I believe he was running like a six pack charter on top of the brand. And so when 2008 came, you know, all hell broke loose in the, in the economy and stuff. So he just decided to close everything up and just put it into a storage unit. And he had pieces in all over, all different um, areas of like production being ready to re-release, not like from just the actual piece, uh, aluminum, you know, like raw to like some of them painted, some of them ringed, some not. It was all over the place. but. It sat there for about eight or nine years. My math can be a little off. And that was about eight or nine years ago. And so our buddy, he decided to back out on that. And so uh, Hugon and I decided to pull the trigger and actually you know, buy the brand and do it. And so then that's how we started doing Kicker. It was just kind of kind of random in a way, but something you could t- we wanted to do, you know? And it just felt like it was just there one day. So we just decided to seize the opportunity because we thought it'd be fun to put like marketing and stuff behind it. Because, you know, I mean, a, a jig's a jig. As long as it swims, you're gonna catch a fish on it, right? Mm-hmm. So we we thought that you know, there's no one doing anything cool. Like you know, if you look at some of our competitors, you know, Instagrams and stuff, it's like it looks like they're my dad's running it or something. No <laughs> offense, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking mess. So we thought we're like, oh, we have the eye, you know, we're we're gonna be able to you know crush it, you know. But jigs jigs are fun. So um, and so then we decided then do we need to expand because you can't only do jigs I mean you can I guess but there's more to fishing than just one lure right and I think that's where kind of like the um, the pickle kick came from and so the pickle kick which has like a whole other um, long story behind it you know it's a swim bait for those who don't know and it it looks like a swim bait should look and uh, <laughs> and it's something that we actually um, were you know pouring you know years ago like I'm talking like Gosh, now it's got to be like 15 years ago, but it was just like a single pour. One of my really good friends, Whit Curry, who was the um, he was the painter for Triple Trout, and he was a really good bait maker. He makes some cool baits right now too. Um, yeah, he he you know he designed me this one shape, and it was pretty awesome. And I would pour and pour, and we were doing pretty good in like all these tournaments and stuff, you know. And so then when Kicker came around, we then decided to bring that into Kicker, you know. But okay, back to the history of Kicker a little bit. So fast forward a little while, me and Hugh Gron, we're doing great, uh, and then he decides to do a little, you know, career change. He becomes a commercial real estate guy, uh, has kids, has a wife, you know, all that stuff. So then he had no time for the brand anymore. So I ended up buying, I ended up buying him out, and then 
uh, working on the brand by myself a little bit, getting a little burnt out and kind of getting to a point about a year and a half, two years ago to where I was like, man, this is really fun. Um, and I like, liked, I love doing it, but I'd rather be just fishing, mm-hmm. you know? And Skyler, he's been my tournament partner for about four or five years now, you know, and stuff. And so I got to this one point one day, I was like, Sky, like, I don't want to do kicker anymore unless you like become involved in it because it, uh, it's just a lot of work, you know, and I need someone else to offload some of the stress to, you know. <laughs> so now you can see Skylar starting to get gray hairs, but he's dying his hair blonde <laughs> so that you can't <laughs> see him now. You Pluck know? a few grays out of the beard this morning. <laughs> just hiding yeah. it up. But for such a small brand, you'd be, you'd be surprised on how much work goes, you know, oh, no, uh, into these little things. So. Well, I, I think for the, before I knew you guys, I thought Kicker was like a full-time deal. I like I didn't realize it was like really just a, 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 a side hustle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, that's like full-time because like I think – your guys' is like media presence and just like how widely kickers adopted throughout SoCal, mm-hmm. especially on the inshore side of it. It's like, oh, it's a huge, it's not a huge brand for the SoCal industry, mm-hmm. which is cool. Right. Also, and it's impressive that you guys are able to, you know, accomplish mm-hmm. that yeah, with it being like part time. It's definitely been apparent. Like I've known about kickers as a brand for a long time now, but um, just kind of the resurgence in, um, I'm not going to say there was like a lack of effort before, but you guys are like crushing the social media game now um, as far as like building a community around the brand too, that the support that all the inshore and bass guys have with each other is, is really like cool to see. Mm -hmm. And um, I think your brand is like at the forefront of that along with some others, which is, which is really cool. And just now that I know you're not burnt out and having fun fishing. (laughs) Awesome. Like I said, honestly, bringing Skylar on helped a ton with that, you know, because um, you can't do it all as one person, right, in that sense. Uh, but I also realized that if you actually put effort into something, you know, <laughs> things can come out of it. For sure. And I think there was a mental switch when Skylar uh, came a part of this because it wasn't just me doing it and stuff. And, and I, I kind of used to think, I'm like, oh, kicker's just a glorified hobby. And that was weird. I would literally tell people, that ah, it pays for itself, you know, it doesn't really make a ton of money. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it pays for my fishing, so that's cool. And then so I was like, all right, I gotta switch this mindset. It's actually a business, you know. And now Skylar and I are like, we're gonna, we're on, we're like trying to do our best to make it become like our full time eventually. Like it's actually something we really want to do. Mm-hmm. So we got a bunch of fun things that you know um, we're trying to you know are do in the works. Expand. Yeah, to can make you, it. Can you can you tell us about yeah, any yeah, of them? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Can I mean, we hear about like any of them? Like a secret, but it's not. Uh, well, we're actually so that that loft that I was talking about that I live in. Um, the whole downstairs has been dedicated to kicker and sometimes you know some people know by coming up to our warehouse sales and they've checked it out uh but now skylar has been working on it like kind of non-stop for the last month now mm-hmm. like i'm talking a lot <laughs> in a way but we were turning it into a storefront which we're going to open up partially throughout the week uh like wednesday through friday and uh between what 10 a.m to 6 p.m does it sound about right he's like yeah, we'll, we'll figure, it out. figure it out <laughs> but the thing is i can't commit to those hours because i have a full-time job mm-hmm. right now still i'm running a full-time job while trying to do everything for kicker um skylar is in between jobs right now he's i mean i'll let him talk about what he does but so we're trying to do it to where he can actually um you know have this as you know some, some of his income you know so mm-hmm. running the shop and yeah the studio business uh has its slow times you know for sure and uh so kicker's been a great outlet to just kind of you know, still be creative and create stuff, but stuff I actually want to make, you know, like yeah. lures and new ideas and help with the HQ and stuff like that. So it, it's hopefully it does take off and I can go full time on that and <laughs> never have to go work on a movie again. <laughs> that'd, that'd be so with this being like a storefront, obviously it'll be all the, the range of kicker products. What else will be there? Um, we're thinking of bringing a few other brands in, some of our yep. like core brands that we we fish that we're really dedicated to and are friends with, like Afran at War Baits. We're gonna have a little section of some of his baits. A lot of the stuff coincides with what we make, so oh, it's like it's a, kind it's, of it's a perfect pairing. It's yeah, for it's kind of like you can't just come in and get the pickle kicks and not have anything to put it on, you know. So we'll mm-hmm. have the different heads and uh, maybe even some some electric sunglasses cool some of the models we like and handful of AFCO products stuff like that at least at first until hopefully it expands yeah we're kind of looking at it as like a curated tackle box in a sense right like Mm -hmm. so we we have brands that we look up to as well and we want to try to get those in there you know things that we fish Mm -hmm. in tournaments or even just for fun and um, so yeah that's kind of like the plan is to just kind of grow that in that sense too as well as I'm, I'm just curious as far as like the direction of the brand are you guys kind of 
going all in on this inshore kind of bass game, whether it's like green bass or calicos, obviously. Because um, I know, obviously, jigs, when, when we think of service irons, I would say probably a majority of the people in Southern California think of like, oh, yellowtail, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, even though it is a phenomenal calico bass bait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is like, what's your guys' plan as far as direction? Are you really want to kind of um, build Kicker as like this all encompassing kind of inshore company or, or, or what? Yeah, I mean, it's a, that's a good question because we, I mean, we're bass dorks. And when I say bass dorks, it's fresh and salt water. Like, we love catching, I mean, whether it's in a golf course at a lake or at San Clemente Island, like, yeah. we love catching bass, but we love all types of fishing. Mm-hmm. Like, we've been on tuna trips, yellowtail trips, like, and we go down and catch, like, Cabrilla, and, like, I'm not afraid to go anywhere else to catch anything, you know? Like, it's just so fun. Fishing is just that. So, uh, but we know that if we ever want it to be a brand to where we actually, it's our full time, mm-hmm. like, we know we have to expand outside of just our Southern California, like, stuff in that sense. So, our plan is, you know, even, like, that's why we're releasing the Pickle Kick in the 3-inch, it's going to be like a pretty rad spotty bait, but we're hoping that it'll also cross over into some freshwater stuff as well, you know, mm-hmm. start getting some little largies and stuff. On yeah, and stuff. for sure. So, yeah, we do plan to expand past that, and we're slowly doing that with other concepts and ideas that we have uh, in the works right now. And so, yeah. No, I just I just asked because I've seen, like, obviously there's been a ton of promotion on the Pickle Cake. It's a great bait. Um, we saw that firsthand, like, not even we didn't catch a single bass on one we weren't fishing for bass but we absolutely roped yellowtail in yeah. baja on them. yeah 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 um yeah, and people don't they, they sleep on the idea of catching like yellows on uh like swim baits on kind of on wheat on a freaking weedless yeah, bait yeah, it was yeah, pretty yeah. cool and like a couple of fish absolutely choked them they were keyed in on this like pipe fish deal mm-hmm. um and rad. we didn't have any the first day because our buddy brian hadn't flown in mm-hmm. yet and we were getting like bit okay on the jig and he came in the second day with the pink one which looked exactly like the pipe fish oh, and it was mm-hmm. full speed. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. We've had similar bites where it was wide open, but wide open on the PK. Yeah. You mm-hmm. could throw yeah. a jig and maybe yep. get some follow follows, but they would not touch it. Yeah. They, they wanted to that, it. that straight tracking bait. You the know? pink PK seven yeah. gets so bit mm-hmm. by such a variety. <laughs> it's well, I impressive. think too, okay. one of the, um, I dude, I caught a friggin' rooster fish on it too. Yeah, that's wow. insane. I and think you're the first person. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the only sure. one. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was a proper one, like 35 pounds. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I think one of the cool, uh, coolest products you guys make too is the um, the 15 heavy, mm. right? Because especially for SoCal, like granted, you can catch a fish on a plug probably anywhere in the world, but for SoCal specifically, when we're always having an issue matching the size of our baits when we're fishing for that bluefin in mm-hmm. the foam because that anchovy is like anywhere from an inch long to maybe like three inches and unless it's bigger but a lot of times we're like oh you know like we can't we don't have a small enough bait that's heavy enough to fish on a mm-hmm. on a proper setup that we can land like an 80 pound fish on it right right and the 15 heavy is that smaller profile but you can still cast it yeah yeah, yeah. and um i think not a ton of people have tried that jig and everyone knows like dude service irons get absolutely licked by tuna Mm -hmm. so having that smaller profile and being able to earn a bite on those days when it's like really tough is is huge yeah the what's versatile about that is like you're saying is the weight Mm -hmm. and the size of it what's pretty cool is you can use it as a surface iron as well you can cast it and wind it like just a little bit slower and it'll stay and Mm -hmm. then you can literally get bit just on the drop yeah you know or just cast it right in the middle of foam or that kind of (laughs) helps too but um yeah, I've actually even caught halibut on that thing. Which really? Is not a lot. I'm not saying it's on a halibut the, on lure, the, but on the 15 on the, heavy. Yeah, on the drop, you know, like right That's when it hit the cool. ground, I lifted it up and just a bit. Mm. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people think it as just like a yo yo iron because mm. it's a heavy, but. Mm-hmm. It's a great. It's that's such it's a versatile a great bait. bait. You know, I just I call it like the cast master on steroids. You know, <laughs> yeah. you just can chuck it so far and just burn it full speed, and it doesn't come out of the water. Yeah, that's and, huge. And skip, you know, it stays in and. You're um. Your service signs are they CNC'd? Um, no, they're not. They're they're in a mold. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah um, I know, cause um, I mean, I'm sure you've heard it, but your your 25 light is like lighter than most service signs are the same size, right? Yes. Is it? Yeah. It's, yeah. Just a little bit. We're not. We don't know a whole too much about all the irons, but we have been yeah. told that our iron is one of the like lighter surface irons Mm -hmm. it's definitely light it still casts well but what i found in my experience is that um 
if you're fishing on a sport boat, it's a little bit tougher. You're 20 feet out of the water, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but on, you know, a private boat, it's it's kind of the perfect jig because mm-hmm. it f- absolutely flies and mm-hmm. you're not going to get worn out if you're casting that thing all yeah, day. Yeah, sure, sure. Because it's not so freaking heavy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've caught, uh, we had, when the yellowfin was foaming on the nine, like all I was catching on, I couldn't get a bite on anything else except the, uh, yeah, we the, were tetra, fish- the tetra foils. Oh, red. Mm. Yeah, we were yeah. fishing that day and we... It was frustrating because we, I think, pulled up to probably like you ten get a or bite. fifteen I could not get a and bite. could not get a bite. <laughs> but the the the, the twenty five light was That's the ticket. Nice. Oh, sweet. Yeah, like it's definitely story. it's definitely uh, on the lighter side. Mm. But obviously, you guys have heard that. Yeah. But it's still, I mean, it's a killer, especially if you're going to be on a on a private boat and not twenty feet out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the yeah, eleven foot rod comes in handy. You keep yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, point towards the water a little bit more. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, I mean, so it, it's kind of the same with any jig, just like learning how to fish it properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it know. took me a while actually to figure out the kicker, the cadence and stuff. It was, it's not so much a right out of the box jig. You do have to. <laughs> And I, I, I really don't think there is an out of the box jig. Like right. You have to, for any service iron, even if it's from the, you can have the two same, two of the same service irons from the same brand mm-hmm. and they're both going to swim a little differently, you know? That's and, true. and that's what, where time on the water and, and mm-hmm. just getting out and, and actually fishing it comes in Absolutely. to play. Sorry. I mean, cut oh, you no. off. All good. So the PK3 <coughs> coming down the pipe, mm-hmm. what did the development planning production, what does it look like, like from ideation to execution like what did that process look like for you guys like thinking up a new bait and bringing that to market well the, the good thing is we already have like a nine a seven and a five so the idea is just kind of shrink it down it's almost that it's not that easy because we had to like change a few things about it like i think we expanded the tail by a 15 <laughs> percent. i don't mm-hmm. know if that's the exact percentage but um yeah, and I think we had to do something like that and like kind of make it a little bit skinnier so it would kick a little easier because I, we know the freshwater guys want a little bit slower yeah. retrieve bait that will still kick, you know. Um, because our, our baits, our bigger ones, are a little bit tougher plastisol because the fish that we catch have teeth, you know. So you have to actually kind of make them move a little bit. They're not just going to like barely move and they'll just start kicking or like these little thin tails that get like, you know, we don't want to get tail bit. Like I, it's sure that'd be a good idea, you know, get all your tails ripped off so you sell more lures. But personally, <laughs> I don't even want to lose my tail, lose yeah. my tail. That pisses me off. Yeah. And I don't want to sit there and keep changing baits. I'd rather have, if you see some of our baits, they come back looking like little fuzzy tennis balls because you caught 40 fish on some of those lures. Oh, I'm not yeah. saying mm-hmm. every lure is that's going to happen because I've had a brand new lure get tail bit. It does happen. But there's a good chance that you can use one lure through a whole trip. The durability is unmatched. Right. It's, it's was, impressive seeing yeah. like some of the, the baits full, like completely operational, but just like it's been chewed the I mean, entire. You got a taste of it. And oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Sonata, I have, I have two, two PK sevens um, that are just both completely chewed, but perfect. And I, at a certain point I was like, I want to retire this bait just because yeah. of how cool it looks at this mm-hmm. point. You know, I'm like, yeah. I don't want to yeah, lose yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a couple. Yeah, we yeah, have. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. Sitting on our. I mean, life, it's yeah. huge because yeah. everyone who's ever fished spotties has dealt with like, bro, you gotta change your plastic. Like, you might not even catch a fish on it, and yeah, you gotta yeah, change yeah, it because yeah. mm-hmm. the tail's yeah. gone. And, yeah, you can uh, burn through a whole pack oh, dude, without that's one catching thing we a fish. Like, right. Yellowtail don't have teeth necessarily, but they have like a like a sandpaper kind of mouth. Yeah. Well. You know, I mean, and, if you're fishing the islands, the damn calicos are trying exactly, to rip them out they have of the yellows. Than, mouth, yeah, you know? exactly. And that's where you generally lose the tails is the, 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 follower the followers trying yeah. to take it. And I think that's more important in the long run, like producing a, a, a high quality bait. Like I'm not comparing you to them in any way, but like we fished with some um, Z-Man products mm-hmm. earlier the, this year and, and you can catch like 50 fish on one of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we always talk about like, oh, don't you want to make it like slightly less durable so you'll sell more? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like if you're producing a good product, like of course the angler is going to come back and want right. to fish mm-hmm. it. Right, right, right. And um, yeah, it, whether you retire the bait or you get hung up on structure and break it off, which you know, we've, we've never done before, but <laughs> yeah, we're we're really good at not getting <laughs> yeah, snagged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've never lost a bait, um, especially mm-hmm. fishing things like the wall. You never lose anything out there, yeah. you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And especially like, I, 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 did you fish them much down in Baja for those Cabrilla? Because that's like a tr- a proper test, yeah. right there. Yeah, you, you did you, actually. You should yeah. have seen this guy. He was. He Roping them on, uh-huh. on the, the seven inch yeah. or mm-hmm. five and the seven. Yeah. But the five was money, like the five on the one ounce neck breaker. And they held up pretty good. Burning it as fast as you could. Yeah. Just smoking red. it. Yeah. We tried to fish like we list sometimes. And if the trigger fish are there, you're kind yeah. of screwed because yeah. they'll just chomp your, come out with these little bites, little. little That's the one fish <laughs> that no matter how durable your plastic <laughs> is, you're, you're pretty much screwed. Yeah, yeah. Was <laughs> it was like probably two years ago. We were on a company trip. We went down to Rancho Leonero on the East Cape. 
and I had like two PK fives and I don't think I caught a fish on it. I, I just pulled it back and it, cause I didn't fish that much in like Southern Baja. So well, I was we like, told him we're like, don't leave all your plastics. At but home. I was like, I was like, I'm bringing my plastics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm like, I like bass fishing. And so I throw it and I pull it back and there's just like little, all these yeah, little dude. pockets taken yeah, out of yeah, it. I was like, moons. Mm -hmm. all right, well, guess I'm not going to fish uh, a soft bait anymore. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. So yeah, but it, it's cool. I think like for the species that it is designed for, it's one of the most durable baits for those, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a, something with insane teeth, any bait is going to get, right. you know, get ripped smoked. apart. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it would be just fun to try and catch all these exotics. Like the rooster was sick, but just anything will eat a swim bait, mm -hmm. you know? And like, dude, taking that thing down to the ridge, trying to catch like a Wahoo on it or something, I think would be fun. Yeah. I mean, this past <laughs> season, weren't people catching Dorado on the PK five? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I saw like a couple yeah, photos yeah, no, of that, you're right, you're right, yeah, yeah. like on yeah. the, the spotty PK five yeah. trifecta. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> like it's cool. Cause it is such like, it's the, an action of a swim bait is pretty much universal, mm -hmm. you know? And so yeah. it, it will apply to everything, which is cool. So it's, it'd be interesting to see kind of how that expands. You know, I'm sure like there's applications for, I mean, I've seen some stuff from Florida with like redfish speckled trout and stuff yeah. like that, but it's like, there's so much out there as far as like, I think every, almost every single style of fishing has a swim bait somehow incorporated. Right. You look at any freshwater thing, you know, there's going to be some type. You look at East Coast bluefin, they fish those big plastics, mm -hmm. the slugs out there, stuff like that. You look at striper, like there's so many options right. for the swim bait. So it'd be cool to see kind of how those expand maybe across the country and stuff totally. like that, you know? We just got to put more projects together, yeah. you know? And I was go. just going to yeah. say, man, yeah. like, it sounds yeah. like you guys are full speed trying to set up the storefront, but um, do you guys have plans to go like in, to travel to some of these destinations and like fish your baits? Mm -hmm. And as far as just like building the marketing around this stuff, you know, just showing yeah. like, hey, man, you well, can catch well, a currently fish we, we kind of just uh, got, we're still riding the high from our Untamed Shallows sure. video premiere and a video that we just released on YouTube. <coughs> um, and so we still have some of these ideas that we want to do, even just our, our stuff locally, you know, or not on locally, but our coast, let's just say. Yeah. Oh, we don't even in New Mexico. That's where we just were. But uh, uh, Ira is our cameraman for these things. So <laughs> we slash outfishes us, man. But uh, I mean, so we brought, him to, like, you know, we brought him to capture this stuff and he caught the, all the big that's fish. That's always so how it works. He yeah. got the ender fish in both, you know, I don't know if you watch like skate sections, but the ender trick is always like the cool one. You yeah. know, and he got the ender fish for both sections. <laughs> he caught the big that ones. But, that, was, that was such a cool experience, both that fishing trip and like the process of putting together a video like that. Right, right. Because like I'd never done something of that format and like, you guys have more experience on like the skate side of that but like a fishing edit of that length mm -hmm. you know like i'll I throw together for work a lot of like the 15 to 45 second sizzles like a proper length mm -hmm. short uh -huh. in a sense uh, like that was i mean it took us like two and a half months you don't understand the amount it of work was that goes so in, in, in much and, and like also that. i mean we had probably like 800 gigabytes of footage or something yeah. just ridiculous between gopros you know, the mirrorless setup, like drone, everything. There's so much that goes into that. Right. So yeah, it's kind of the type of thing we like did that. We were like, awesome. That was great. But even like the day after we finished that, we were like, now what's the next trip? You know, so <laughs> right, I think right, there's right. some, there's some cool ideas to showcase that. Yeah. Both locally, some of maybe like some of the outer banks here, stuff like that. There's, I think there's a ton of cool fisheries up North that aren't really explored mm -hmm. too much. So like that could be a cool, a cool video piece and marketing because that's the fun that's like one of the most fun yeah, sides of that you know part. it's like that's like the whole reason why i even got involved in all this stuff because i like that stuff i like to create this like you know the fun stuff try to make fishing look how i think is cool you know what i mean like um but like what you're saying yeah there was so much footage i feel like thank goodness you timelined it all because that was, was so much it was, it was so, much so but did you have 24 to... hours on that one timeline or something? yeah when i when i first like sorted it convince? i think it was yeah i mean because we were fishing for five days yeah yeah like we go out for like a full day of shoot like full day shoot for some product or yeah. whatever, you know? And like my workflow to just go you through with that hours, yeah. is like, it takes a couple days for me to sort through that footage. Mm -hmm. So we went for five days, mm -hmm. like just to look at the footage yeah. takes a week or two. Right, right, right. So it's like, you see then like all the, anything like longer than that. Cause I think our final video is like eight minutes. So if you, somewhere around there, yeah. yeah, something around there, eight or no, was it? It was a little longer cause it I did that little talking was, part. At the oh end, yeah, it was think, a little, so. so the YouTube cuts longer, but like, some of the BD feature films, so like Escape North, Lucky B, Calto, Calico to Cabria, those are like nine to 14 minute films. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, the workflow on the backside of filming something like that is just 
ridiculous. There's so much work that goes into yeah, it. Yeah, you should have seen me trying to get Randy to fish a yo-yo during that calico to reissue. Yeah, I, I totally <laughs> forgot. Yeah, you were you were on that uh, we were on that like shoot. 200 feet of water, and I'm like, we done yet? <laughs> <laughs> he made like two drives. Like, okay, can we over go? it. No, I was over dropping it. a lot. I was trying to get him because I was like, oh, I want to catch one still. But at the same time, I was like, oh, oh no, it wasn't. I couldn't get I couldn't get you pick up a speed like, jigging oh, rod. Well, I didn't have a setup. I yeah, wasn't set also up for that. it. That's true. But I <laughs> I'm really I really like to. You know, I'm really visual in that sense. I like to see the targets, For sure. kind of, you know, casting at and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it's not my boat, I don't get to look at the electronics and see what's yeah. under, you know, because yeah. I don't know what it is lately, but we've been, well, not right now because it's out of season, but we've been doing a lot of rock fishing and stuff, oh, you know, so and it's fun, fun when you roll up to the spot, you look down there and you're like, oh yeah, there's chompers we're, down there and you start dropping down there yeah. and you get bit on the first drop, yeah. you know, that's like fun stuff. But um, yeah, when you're on someone else's boat and then they're like, oh, this is the spot. And you're like, what am I doing? I'm just going to go on the boat. Unless you get bit in the first like two casts, three casts, it's like, okay, I'm ready to move to the next spot. Yeah. yeah. Because that's like the nature of bass fishing. You're like, you're in a zone and they'll, if they're there, they're there. You know what I mean? Unless, and you can go on these long drifts and you, you'll know, you'll like see the area, you'll feel it. You start like the conditions kind of yeah. talk to you a little bit. And then you start realizing like, mm, this ain't the spot. This ain't it. So we move, you know, we move a lot. Like we'll probably move 30 times throughout the day. Which, if you're a bait fisherman, you might move three times. I don't know. I don't fish bait, so I can. <laughs> <laughs> shots, like, shots fired. No, I'm just oh, like, yeah. I just like to trick them. You know, it's for like sure. one thing. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, you're gonna catch a human if you throw a hamburger out there for sure. But it's like, so it's, to me, it's fun. You know, and or sometimes they're only relating to certain types of lures that day, and that's that's the that's the fun to me. That's the puzzle that I have to. You yeah, know, and we we talked out. about that a little bit when um, Nick and. Um, or uh, Lane and, and um, Nick were on mm-hmm. kind of comparing the bass fishing scene to like tuna fishing where 90% of the day of your day is spent looking when you're tuna fishing. Um, whereas like, yes, you're looking when you're bass fishing, but you're, you're at, whether you're at an island or you're fishing the wall or something mm-hmm. like you're still moving all day, but you're always constantly fishing. Um, yeah. Whereas, you know, right. when not you're much offshore, downtime. Like, you have a lot of downtime. Mm-hmm. And I think what would be cool, maybe some aspiring bass guys listening, like taking us through your guys' day, like when you do go fish San Clemente, like what does that yeah. look like, you know, as far as um, you're leaving, like trying to get to the island at gray light, like what conditions are you looking for? Like just kind of taking us through what a, a day of, of fishing looks like for you guys. Yeah. I mean, like figuring out patterns. Yeah, because y- like you guys fish SCI more than anybody I know. Yeah, well, it's because so maybe not as much as Benny. Yeah, well, yeah, well, actually, you'd be surprised because he lately doesn't want to, you know, take. He has he fishes so much that like making those trips. It's a long way. Yeah, don't try to be like, yeah, Catalina's biting guys. (laughs) (laughs) He's really uh, good out front. Mm -hmm. But you know, honestly, your your alarm is set at three a.m. We meet at the boat at four a.m. Right, and then we're gassed and filled up at the ramp by five a.m. Unfortunately. And fortunately, we launch out of Newport and it takes like 30 to 40 minutes to get out of there, except for we go oh, a little yeah. bit faster in the morning to get out a little quicker. But the harbor by the time we make our first cast at the island, it's about 8, 8, 15, 8, 30, you know, depending on how the conditions are to get there. Mm-hmm. So it takes a little while to get there. And we realize, you know, five hours before you get to make your first cast, which is just part of the fishing trip, right? Um, generally, we don't look at tides and stuff because we don't want that to, you know, depict like, oh, tide looks like shit. We're not going to go. Mm-hmm. Can I cuss? Uh, tide oh, looks, yeah, yeah, yeah cuss. <laughs> tide looks, the tide looks bad, so we're not going to go. Or moon phases, which seem to be like, you know, obviously a thing too, but it's like, oh, we're driving out there. It's a oh, full moon last night. They're probably not going to chomp as good today. <laughs> Maybe you never know. It depends. But uh, so we let the conditions when we get there kind of speak to us in that sense and drive around, look for the, you know, some of the stuff that you've probably heard a million times, but obviously want current. You know, a little bit of off-color water always sounds, you know, pretty good. If we've been bit in crystal clear water, don't get me wrong. But if they're not there in the first few casts, like I'm saying, you're kind of out of there mm-hmm. fairly quickly, you know. Yeah, but, we're looking for a specific type of bite, too. We're looking for the aggressive fish that come up right away. There probably are fish in all the spots we fish. But we're not going to sit there and wait it out always with the lead head on the bottom and dragging. That's mm-hmm. like... <laughs> that's last resort. It's like worst that case scenario. Yeah. Yeah. If nothing, five if, if hours, nothing else works, it bites really yeah. good. Like you can go there and go up and down, mm-hmm. like and smoke them almost every time if you want. But it's another one of those things. Like might as well be sand bass fishing if you ask me. Mm-hmm. No offense to the sand bass guys out there, but <laughs> no, it's uh, like you're saying you're looking for the visual kind of like the exciting yeah. bite, right? Yeah. That's why we that go top there. water explosion. Like mm-hmm. when you're winding through the kelp and you're coming over a piece of kelp and you're about to hit the next piece of kelp, which mm-hmm. is normally right about where you're about to get bit. You're just in anticipation, just waiting there. Because the anticipation is almost just as fun as the actual bite, right? Mm-hmm. Especially when you know they're biting. You're like, oh, my God. Oh, this should be a fish. And then it's a fish. That's like 
the best thing, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes to fishing, if you ask me, it's like, but yeah, I mean, just those kind of conditions. Uh, it's weird that the more that you're on the water that suddenly you roll up into a zone, you haven't even made a cast yet and you're like, it's biting. You're like, it's biting right here. And it's just because it all speaks to you. Like everything seems to be lining up, you know, and the drift, the wind, everything's kind of moving the right way. Sure. The water's going, you see bait fish in the water, you know, like you're just like, oh, oh, you see that? Oh, there's bait fish. Oh, there's that, you know, oh, I had a little follower. And if there's little followers, there's gonna be bigger followers, right? And stuff like that. So it's just, it kind of just, you just have to keep going. If you don't keep on going, then you're not gonna be knowing. Wait, I know it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it speaks to the idea of like, Yes, I think like, yeah, certain tides, certain moon phases are going to bite better than others. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of times it's like, hey, if you have a window to fish, go fish. Because mm -hmm. if you don't fish all the conditions, how are you going to figure out which conditions right. bite the best? Because can, everyone can always say, oh, you want this tide, you want this moon phase. But like sometimes you might find a bite outside of that, you right, know, right, and like right. that spending that time on the water, fishing different conditions. Those are the really that's that's what's going to make you a better fisherman in the long run experiencing all Absolutely. types of conditions. But if you have a you full-time job, like you got to go when you can go. Yeah. Right. And um, it doesn't happen often, but like there'll be days I'm sure where you're like, damn, this looks like crap. Like the conditions suck. And then it's wide. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and yeah, the fishing that is happen. really like, that does happen. If yeah. you're not, if you're not there, like you're never going to know. Well, like, it, it's the same thing with any type of fishing. Like really, we, what was it this past fall? Was it November? Or like early, De it was, it was like mid November. Yeah. We caught bluefin off Carlsbad in muddy water. <laughs> oh, it was like full red tide. Yeah. Just, we were just like, what? Yeah, no. Just so it's like, w right you know. Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, we've had some situations like that. Like, mm -hmm. we, we had the horrible backside SEI day. And like, well, horrible. It was probably like 20 or 30 fish. But it was like horrible. It wasn't biting. It was like all harsh, you know. Come around the corner, red tide everywhere. And we're like, we, we always like, you know, pass that stuff up. And we just saw bait like kind of like like puddling, you know. We're like, oh, weird. And started making cast. It was every freaking cast. <laughs> it was like that mm -hmm. last hour of our day just turned into being like one of the best days. We're mm -hmm. like, what the hell? So you just never really know what you're gonna get into, and that's what is awesome about it, right? Yeah, and 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 just spending more time, like you'll get those windows. Like your whole day can be crap, and then you get mm -hmm. one hour, and it makes up for everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I know, and especially with tuna fishing, like it's very apparent, like, oh, this sucks. Why are we out here? Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. 90 miles from the dock and like we haven't seen a fish. And then you get a sundowner and you put like four cows on the boat. And you're like, okay, th that yeah. was okay. Awesome. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think we saw it too, like when we were down in Baja, like we had some really scratchy fishing for a couple of days. And then we had one day where I think we released like 50 fish in an hour. Right, right. And like Benny was so freaking stoked out of his mind. Like you were so fired up. And right, right. just like, I think that's another thing, like fishing with your buddies. Like I'm almost, I'm not as happy, but I'm happy to watch my friend catch a fucking toad. Oh, totally. Like I'm stoked for him, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if everyone is having a good time, like, dude, that makes the whole trip worth it 100%. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like when I'm fishing tournaments with this guy, I tell him I'll net his fish all day. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't care who's like catching that, it yeah. as long as we're catching. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's fun to see him. You just want to see him, huh? Like, it, especially if you see the action. You like, you could be casting over here, but your buddy gets bit at the boat. You're like, whoa! It just, it's mind blowing. Sometimes it could be, but yeah, we when we did our thing in Ensenada, the first couple days was pretty slow. Yeah. We were like, which was you know kind of yeah. weighing on our psyche a little bit, and just you. Mm -hmm. We invest all the time and yeah. money into it, dude, and you're like, well, crap. We're like, supposed well, to make a video out of it. <laughs> yeah, we already yeah, told people we're going to have a, a, a premiere. Like, yeah. we got to put something together. Yeah. yeah, it was the type that we were committed for deliverables before we even left. Right, yeah. And so we were like, oh, we need to hit off a lot of stuff. we got to catch a lot of fish. And, like, when we first pulled up and it wasn't, like, crazy. Like, we were catching fish, but it wasn't nearly, I think, as good as – or it wasn't the type of fishing we expected it to be. Right, right. You know, because we did – there were quality fish mixed in, but it wasn't as much, I think, as we thought. Mm -hmm. um, and so figuring that out as we – Yeah, especially the first couple days. I think our biggest fish was, like, a four or something. Yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. like, oh, gosh. And, you ooh. know, we're supposed to be these calico yeah. guys catching <laughs> calicos, you know. Like, we go down there, we're like, hey, guys, check these out, you know. And we – like he was saying, we had – we had uh, set some expectations because, you know, Cal um, Calico, uh, Kicker is a small brand. So we were like, we can't really afford to pay for all of us to go down for there sure. for five days and like, you know, Airbnb and fish, gas, everything. And even like the permits and stuff kind of all add it's, up. And, it's, um, yeah. So we, we sold it to the sponsors a little bit. We got Electric, Afran from Warbaits and, you know, AFCO uh, all involved in it a little bit. So we're like, yeah, we're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so we're like, oh, shoot, the pressure is <laughs> on right now. You know, yeah. day, but day three, who caught, like someone caught, oh, Skyler's Fogfish or something. Yeah, that was cool. And then we were like, okay, 
is a really foggy, eerie. We're like, at least this thing looks amazing. Yeah. We know this looks really yeah. cool. So then we felt a little confident on day three. We got the we hero shot. One fish. Yeah, that, one that really was it. We needed one, the hero you know? shot. And once that kind of happened, we got we relaxed a little bit more, came up with some more game plans. Now, because we were literally figuring it out, we didn't know yeah. some of those zones. I and some of the zones that I had fished, you know, previously, did not bite. Like Toto Santos. We've had some of our best calico fishing there ever before, but I think it's a time of year thing. Yeah. And we went, yeah. we went in October, which we'd never been before. It was in October. awful fishing. We there. went around. There's two islands, but I just call it one. Whatever. We went all the way around the whole thing for literally two fish, and they were like two one pounders. Yeah. And we're like, oh my gosh, like what are we doing? <laughs> it was like, it was like, was yeah, two like, calico and like a handful of little rock fish. That's when you sit, you sit down at your <laughs> oh, home you and you're like, all right, yeah. what are we gonna do now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. What, what do you think? Yeah, because oh, well, it was also the type of thing at like an end of the day or something. We'd be talking to be like, all right, well we shot like, because like part of it was like we just want to have fun and fish. But another yeah. thing was like, okay, we need to shoot like the, these products, like these sunglasses, right. these shirts, right. these baits, and so it's like. All right, so we need to do X, Y, and Z tomorrow, and it's kind of like yeah. a little bit stressful. But yeah. then, like when it all comes together, it's such a, it's it's satisfying. And that's the know. nature of like the whole fishing industry. Like, shit's expensive, yeah. And and you have you know these deliverables that you're trying to meet, but ultimately, like it's up to Mother Nature, right? right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, the consumer doesn't get to see all that. You no, know? Oh, they yeah. just see like, oh, hey, that was a cool, you know, this and that. But sometimes it's like there was a lot of stress behind just to capture that one little thing, you know, but. It's it's Absolutely. like when your buddy who doesn't fish a lot asks you to take him fishing, and you're like, okay, just so you know, like right. we could have a great day, we could have a really really bad yeah, day. Yeah, when, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the days gonna be spent like just looking. And they're like, no, no, I'm down, and you take him out, and like four hours, like, like okay, like. <laughs> Right, uh, and you take them out, and it's, and it's biting really good. And they're like, "Oh, this is easy." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah or that, yeah, yeah. Or the yeah. exact opposite." Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that's I think also like just working in, on the media side of it. You know, you see like a lot of un- other industries that are shooting product in like a studio. It's like must be nice. Yeah, it's a controlled environment. Controlled right? environment. You can take your time with everything. Where it's like a lot of times, if we're especially like tuna stuff, it's like you know that school's moving through. You have a you have a time window to get right. it, and also once you get that fish in the boat, like for a lot of photos it's like you kind of have a time window before that fish kind of fades yeah and not you know? to not to knock any other like industries in the fishing but like if you're a fly fisherman you know it's so it's calm not oh. so calm but it's like calm nice it's fresh, really just easier if you're yeah. freshwater, freshwater fishing, in general like, just oh my of the god water, yeah. But, yeah if but, you're shore based or like you know it's yeah. it's not yeah. a controlled on the environment ocean, but yeah. it's insane like oh. trying to keep a camera still in the ocean good luck yeah. you know trying so to make hard. someone not seasick who's gonna watch this like right. later on or the guy mm-hmm. behind the camera not get seasick oh, even yeah. if you never get seasick you know it's like it's pretty messed That'll up. That'll do it to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've only, I, last season I got seasick once. It was in the dark. And it was in the dark in April, April early season bluefin yeah. on a sport boat, shooting photos with a wide angle lens at night with a flash. <laughs> and it was like the most like insane bite on yeah. like 20 to 40 pound fish. So they were just coming over the rail because everyone's hooking them on 200 pound. It's mm-hmm. just fish coming over the rail, <laughs> blood, everywhere just and i was just trying to take these photos and i was just like yeah no i'm gonna start jumping the water here so that was fun (laughs) (laughs) do you guys have some like set set trips for uh this year oh man not have some actually not yet no this is kind of how we're kind of flying by the seat of our ass right now on this one but um we have ideas that we what we want to do in a sense and we, we want to do an unchained untamed oh my god i can't even talk untamed shallows too Mm. because it ended up being so fun and like I'd like to believe it was an amazing success, you know? And yeah. um, so I kind of want to do it again, yeah. you know? And yeah, it was yeah, just, yeah. So kind of, oops, sorry, playing footsies. Uh, <laughs> wanted, to, wanted to turn it into like maybe a series now just because, you know, uh, the excitement that it, you know, it brought for us in general. It's like, fun to share that stuff with people for sure. And like seeing the community around it yeah. is huge. Um, but also like, in five years to go back and look at that stuff like yeah it's, so much it's always really fun to look so back i go remember stuff. when i was young and yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> i could still take a beating to san clemente island <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think- i'm around 43 and it's not stopping me yet so i'm gonna keep going until I mean, we have we have you know inspiration like Jack Sawwill. This dude's like in his 80s and he's going to the islands by himself. He's not allowed to go to his wife won't let him go to San Clemente by himself anymore, and that's the only reason why he doesn't because she says no, and he's like 80 plus, right? Wow. But he'll go to Cat by himself. Like, that's awesome. Insane. It's so rad. So I don't know. As long as I stay healthy and fit, I think I'm gonna like keep crushing and sending us for as long Hell as I yeah. can. You know? Yeah. But that's why I hang out with the young guys like you, so then you can like drive me. I'll be chilling. <laughs> yeah. so by that time, I'll have a bigger boat. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have, yeah, we'll have a 60 foot. You know, yeah. yeah, just with a little cruise, tender on the back. Yeah. Cruise cruise the lines. yeah. Oh, that's right. awesome. I mean, I'm like after a full SCI day, like that next day, I'm like sore and tired. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, like, yeah. 
man, it's worth it. it. It's so cool. Bit, but, you, know. you know, that's sure. awesome. So next, what are, what are some of the ideas for trips? Like, are there any zones that you guys have fish that you want to go back to and kind of like dial in or maybe some new zones you guys want to explore? Maybe some, some tuna action in there. Some maybe, but they, so that doesn't go with the full untamed shallows unless we catch tuna on the beach you know that's the thing uh, that'd be possible uh which is for that concept you know uh but anything where we can showcase our lures mm -hmm. in that sense yeah. uh if we just we like to push ourselves we you know we're known for i mean it's not like it's that insane but we're known for driving you know 10 12 hours into mexico to fish you yeah know, some of this stuff and um and i'm down like we just you know uh in november we took my my boat which only has like a 70 four gallon tank to San Nicolas Island, you know? And I just like to do these kind of things because it's possible, you know, you just gotta pick your days, pay attention to weather patterns and stuff like that. Obviously don't, the thing I always do is like, look like a couple days ahead and see if there's no crappy weather coming out there. Then you don't have to worry about it as much, you know, things like that kind of help. But we like to just kind of push the gear that we have, push ourselves in that sense and just kind of go, it's almost possible because it's way more possible than most of us think. And just you know? like exploring those new fisheries, right? Right, right. Is, is such a, a cool thing to do too. Like I've never fished sand. Was that was that a bass thing or like a rockfish thing? I mean, it's, it was whatever, a, whatever, whatever was there. Be. Yeah, and that's what's really rad is like you don't get to catch shallow rockfish that often. Yeah. I mean, we were fishing a jig, you know, top water like surface iron. I mean, sorry, and we were catching rockfish on that. It's like what? Like no rockfish on the surface iron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like stuff oh, like that. And that's then Reynolds cool. was, was with was with us, and he got like smoked by something. It was he a giant sheephead or a black sea bass? You know, just like you know, flipping a swim bait down a stock. You know, so it's really cool because you just get to fish these fish that no one goes out there to fish that way. And like, and it was all the calicos you wanted. You know, we put a little YouTube yeah. up of it. It's just like long running. No one goes out there for calicos. Yeah, and you can tell because it's like because it's you, good. You can cast <laughs> in any direction, mm -hmm. any direction, just off the back or anything just full speed and they're just on it mm -hmm. that's did it. you grow wow. up in in southern california mm -hmm. yeah. so you, uh, have you been fishing like your whole life oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure been mm -hmm. uh, like grew up doing like freshwater stuff yeah, and I then kind of grew yeah into the saltwater scene or totally yeah. yeah yeah just bass fishing mostly you know started off bluegill bass <laughs> late you know catfish yeah. oh, at yeah. the lake and then uh just kind of figured out bass fishing artificials bass and then i was hooked oh yeah and then living in socal going on youtube seeing these guys you know justin reynolds randy afran all you know just catching calicos and just how full speed it is and you know it's not so much a finesse game you can power fish these fish and that's how i like to fish so naturally just kind of progressed towards that and yeah that's awesome. Yeah. Do you have uh, do you have interest in in like the tuna stuff, or is that kind of not so much? Yeah, no, just I'm not just curious. So much. I I've gone and it's fun and like yeah, I love like pulling on big fish yeah. and like you know getting dragged, screamed. It's all fun, but yeah. the long days of like seeing nothing <laughs> that, that's hard for me. I'm very much into like instant gratification, you know. Like, that's why I like to create things because I can create it and see it and be like, yeah, I did, you know, right away I get that feeling. Mm -hmm. So bass feeling is this, or bass fishing is the same thing. It's like, it's kind of like the way we do it. Like we say, if it's not instant right away, we're out. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find that instant gratification. With You're every constantly cast. doing something, something yeah. or another. Yeah, yeah. So And like when he's saying creating things, like, you know, switching up your lures and like, mm -hmm. you know, from a swim jig to just a weedless thing, but, you know, putting this skirt to match with this head to match with this swim bait color. And that's kind of like, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, a little trade in itself and figuring that out. You totally. know? So yeah. it's another thing. Figuring out the good. pattern of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does it, does it change, uh, I, like, ex I'm not super um, versed in this bass stuff, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm like gonna pick your That's brain good. about That's it. Good. Yeah, no, th does it really change much like day to day as far as the presentation and, and the certain baits that they're on? Like mm -hmm. literally like back to back days, they'll keyed in on something and, and then the next day you'll be fishing that same exact bait and it's like, oh, like why aren't we getting as bit? And yeah. you switch yeah. up and it's like, Totally. It's back on. That's the fun part of it. You're always trying to figure yeah. out that pattern. And mm -hmm. sometimes the pattern will stick for a little bit. So some it, which is kind of fun. You're like, oh man, they're eating the jig. Yeah. They're eating the jig mm -hmm. right now in the boiler. So you get to cast in the tiniest water, you know, and just kind of the shallowest stuff and you get to swim back and get bit. And then you come back the next weekend and they're like, You don't even catch one doing that. And you'll end up sticking to it because you know that you caught them that way last yeah. time. But then the next time you come back, oh, they're on like, you know, a swim jig versus literally like a, sometimes they want a swim jig over a swim bait and it's so weird and we've had days where it's like 
all they want are swim baits and like they don't want any stick baits and they don't want any jigs you know so it's like you just and that's what's fun about taking multiple people because everyone fishes something different and once someone starts kind of getting bit on one thing everyone switches over mm -hmm. it and everyone's getting bit you know so that was the cool thing about our trip to ensenada too because you're fishing you know roughly the same fishery but different spots for mm -hmm. five days straight you know and mm -hmm. so and with three people fishing you're fishing so many different baits so many different spots and so over those days you're learning different things especially if it's a somewhat new zone and new spots you know and so i think we were finding okay like pk7 here pk5 here they were mm -hmm. eating the jig maybe here stuff like that and like those different kind of dissecting that and coming up with that whole plan is part of the fulfillment right. of it and right. kind of what's exciting yeah and like he was saying we found you know some fish we found them just like you know hunker down in the rocks where we had to like drag it through the rocks mm -hmm. to get bit and then we'd find these little areas that had just a little bit of kelp near rocks and then that was what was bit and then we found like just kelp off the beach and then that was what was bit you know so it's like you have to like kind of you know, always figure out a new pattern. And sometimes you fish a stretch and then that stretch only looks like itself, you know, and if what, but when you find that stretch, that's kind of biting like that, you go and try to find that somewhere else on the Island or somewhere else down the coast, you know, that looks very similar to the same setup because the water directions that way. And you just kind of repeat, rinse and repeat. And then that's your pattern for that day, you know? So it's like, and like when we did that trip, we just tried to take all the knowledge that we do up here and just go down into like, you know, some waters that we don't know, <laughs> but try to do yeah. what we know down there. And it tends to work sometimes, but I mean, yeah, it sounds like you can make it as, as technical as you really, as you really want mm -hmm. and try to figure out, you know, um, it's just fun. Cause they eat all kinds of lures. Yeah. They eat so many different things. So it's kind of, sometimes it's what you want to catch it on when the fishing is ex extremely good, but sometimes it's not, you know? Yeah. So. Sometimes cool. you have to break out the yo-yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, so Skylar, so what are some of the the ideas, the creations of new new things that you've been working on? Because the PK rig, uh huh, that was a couple months ago that you uh, like built that out. It's been actually or, a few years. Oh, okay. I've, so I've been, I've been yeah. messing with uh, making a rigs, and I had the first prototype of the PK rig like a few years ago. Oh, cool. But we just. He wasn't totally sold on P a rigs yet, you know, <laughs> and a few more trips like, and maybe a couple now. one tournaments, you know. And then you're like, oh, then he's like, this okay, maybe this is something we should bring in. And I made a couple that look pretty decent, and then yeah, just kind of took from there. It's a fun little, fun little. I say it's fishing when I'm not fishing, you know, like working on lures and stuff. It's like, hmm. you know, I get to fish when I'm not fishing. Yeah. But to kind of answer your question a little bit more, and we're working on a couple more soft plastics as well. And then there's a few like, I don't know if you want to call them accessories. I don't want to say what they are yet, but we're kind of working that way also. So just to expand outside of just lures too, because I don't know, we just like, we, we maybe this is a little bit... Uh, narcissistic but we like our, our aesthetic and stuff and we want to always be kind of wrapped around it a little bit and just kind of have more of our our look and feel out there i guess i don't know how no, else to really think, say that i yeah. think that totally makes sense like having having a a, a proper like brand identity yeah mm -hmm. you know and um both of you working in like the design space i, I think it shows you know mm -hmm. um anywhere from like the apparel you guys make to to your guys's product um yeah so I think one thing um, that I'm really keen on for this year, and I know you are, um, are our Baja trips. And um, I think it'd be really cool. Have you caught a double digit Cabrilla? Or have you caught, um, excuse me, like the 20 plus? Yeah, I've caught what was 20. What was like your guys' big fish of, of your trip when you were down there last year? Last year, I think we didn't get any huge ones. Matt, you caught some goldens, oh, right? Matt got a pretty big one. Yeah. I know you caught a golden. Oh, I caught a caught handful. A yeah. nice, Six. any nice ones? Uh, one was like I think fourteen. Was oh, it? that's yeah, a big one. Twelve to fourteen. That's I an think. epic fish. The big one. Oh, it's so yeah. cool. But okay, so obviously the golden is like oh, it's like the fish, right, to catch down there. And for those that know, Cabrilla, they go through this transformation, like one out of 2,000, supposedly, go through this, like, golden transformation. I don't even think that you know exactly the reasoning yeah. for it. Or, <laughs> Some and I don't even know. It's a pigment mutation. Yeah, I know, but they don't, like, yeah. if is it, like, a, a mating thing? Or, like, what is it? Like, they just, it's it just like, happens, it's right? It's kind of like yeah. an albino, but yeah. not as but they But the thing is, they're not born that way. They, they have it, and then they, they change into it. Because we've caught, like, where there are half, these little mm -hmm. patches of. Have you really? There's Whoa. been, like, patches of old. Oh, I thought, I didn't know. It was yeah. like a transformation. Yeah, I thought it was yeah, just yeah. like some were born with this mutation. Right. Yeah, no, so that's, that's why it's kind of crazy. You've cut um, one in, in transition. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and so there's been a, um, 
We and the ones I mean in the past I caught like little you know two pounders. Yeah. And you're like you're still stoked. You're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, no way, yeah. I still got one of these. But this last trip that we went on, I think one day we caught seven, six. Uh, like we caught five in one day. Five in one day. Oh. Okay, Whoa. but then for the trip every day we kept going to this one zone and we kept catching one. And we're like. Mm-hmm. We call it Golden Alley. We just made up some name for it. But <laughs> yeah. it was actually insane. But Skyler caught a, a big one, like 12 to 14 pounds is what mm-hmm. our estimation was. I don't know why we didn't weigh it, but right, whatever. That's <laughs> so smart. cool. Um, but yeah, not on this last trip. I don't know. What was our biggest fish? I think you're 14 something, 15. Oh, we got yours, a 15. Yours was like 14s 15, and 15s. 15 something. Um, it was a, like, it was, like I said, it was, a, oh, that one. No mixing my trips up but this trip at the beginning was really hard for us because we mm-hmm. went for 19 days on that that last what? trip down. yeah we went we sent how, we how fried were you guys by then actually I no because uh you got to relax you know because normally you go down true. there and you have five That's days true. and two out of the three days it's windy and so you're like for something to fish in a bay or something yeah. you know and it's like and you get smoked and by the time you get there you don't even get to relax and you're already coming home mm-hmm. right so this was epic so the windy days like we we're just like cool just we'll just, chilled we'll just relax yeah. and we just chilled out you know and it actually wasn't like horrible we weren't roached out and it felt calming because you were able to relax in the trip Get some downtime you know? right 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 Get, collect your shit but we sent it we went to the um is la guardia like is that what it's called yeah Gu- 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 you guys fish out of we went there i went there twice uh yeah we we went down there tw- uh four three times three times mm. you know and, like kind of sent it it's like 43 miles from where we we're staying so um wow yeah but the first week was so freaking slow it was absolute oh. we went and fished yellowtail in 200 feet of water that's how slow it was <laughs> just like, but no we, we went to uh yeah we actually that was actually really fun golden reef we went to golden reef we're not to, we're like oh yeah golden reef that everyone's like talk kept talking about it, like oh yellowtail yellow golden reef golden reef and we get out there and it was like exactly what you'd always want to see the birds diving casting on the birds like ah and you just like cast at one seagull and get bit yeah was, <laughs> you got like 20 was, fish following your jig no you'd yeah. watch the bird and if it was if it like this it just looked down just a little bit and kept going you're like that's the spot and it was, a bit. <laughs> it was crazy it was like that yeah. bit and then i had to um i had to tell him was like and from i learned it from the trip that we went on down uh the cabrilla to calico thing um the way that the pongaros will just roll right up on you i was like hey just relax these dudes are gonna especially because you're hanging one right now these dudes are gonna roll right up on us yeah 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 yeah. he didn't know yet and he's like what do you mean i'm like he's like sitting there hanging in yellow he wants to like put his hands up he's all and i'm talking like bow to bow oh yeah and there's like they drop you know it's just bit it's like it's it's an interesting technique but they all like dude they work together so well and um i think we're just fired up oh yeah when we're so used to in southern california like if someone gets within 100 yards of you you're like freak out casting at him yeah and whatever whatever words right, right. you can right. think of come out of your mouth yeah um but yeah that's just how they fish down there and it and it works it does it does i feel like the fish are plenty that's why you know kind of helps. that's the other thing bit. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't fly uh here at home yeah if you still got bit and someone roll up on you you wouldn't even care you know like, exactly here, but generally you yeah scared, it's like it, the fish they're gone yeah if everyone's kind of helping each other out and there's plenty to go around and no one's really struggling it's right. like great but i feel like here like if you're really having to work for a bite and yeah, then someone yeah, yeah. rolls up on your hard-earned bite you're like oh my god what's right, happening right, here right, right. and that skinny water stuff it just it, again like i don't calico bass fish a ton but to me i imagine like that's what your day kind of consists like you're literally just rolling along the beach or or the islands like mm-hmm. all day fishing that skinny water and the bites are just insane they can be it can that's why and and that's kind of like what you know when you're searching for your tuna all day right when you actually get your bites it's like oh it's so worth it because sometimes it's not sometimes we have insane days and i think it's like it feels like we always have insane days because you that's the only thing you remember you forget the bad days you know what i mean it's like i can't remember a bad day who wants to remember that right <laughs> so you always feel like oh yeah it's gonna so then when you go and you have a slow day you're like oh, this shouldn't be happening you know, <laughs> yeah. You know? but yeah. but yeah like you're right we're drifting the, the shallow stuff but once you find a pattern you try to like create that throughout mm-hmm. wherever you can you know and then Hopefully it's fighting because that's the best. Well, I think that another thing that's cool, like I've only ever fished with the Pongaros down there um, and like being your own captain in mm-hmm. this, in these foreign waters mm-hmm. um, forces you to learn even more. Yeah. I and, think that's why we like to take our boats down there. You know? Yeah. Like, Once you can get over the like driving through Mexico with your boat, um, I think <laughs> it sounds, it sounds like a, a, a really like awesome adventure. Yeah. Um, I just like try to pretend like it's all good and, it's all good you know you just cruise it's like i mean i know there's crime everywhere and it's probably a little more dangerous there but you know you just got to roll with it and just kind of like just keep your head down and keep going hopefully it's all good you know yeah <laughs> we gotta get you down there dude i'm i'm ready this year I, i'm gonna try to how's your spanish 
it's work, pretty bad. Work, work, work <laughs> in progress. Bad, yeah. You know? yeah. You got the apps on your phone now. Hopefully that helps. Yeah. Yeah, when you have service. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, exactly. Well, you can download it, actually. Yeah, true. But there the food's go. all time, always. What's that? Oh, the eat, food eat is good just, while you're down there. I just want to eat when I'm down there. That's it, mm. you know? It's so good. Except when I'm fishing. Right. Yeah. But that's the other thing. It's so damn hot. Like, you're pretty much... I mean, you're fucking crazy, so you fish all day. But, like, dude, I'm like 2 p.m., like, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a siesta. How old are you? <laughs> sound like you're 60 already bro. let's go <laughs> come on yeah it's, but that's another thing yeah, like just bring a sandwich on the boat you'll be fine yeah and then making <laughs> like i mean exactly like you said making like a longer trip out of it i think kind of yeah it makes sense like that's definitely it's a cool idea yeah. yeah that's definitely the proper way to do it you know if you have the time yeah, you know, yeah instead yeah. of getting down there you know fishing three days and then having to immediately come back home right 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 yeah. but if that's all you can do do that too because you have to you know but yeah yeah that i think man i look back to that and it's like i felt like i was actually on a proper vacation yeah. you know what i mean so. we were like locals midway through the trip like the actual locals were like mm. coming up to us at the end of the day and yeah. like oh man how was it yeah 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 you guys <laughs> were out there all day you guys are crazy <laughs> that's what i'm saying yeah. dude yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. sun up to sun down you know i mean but they also fish like 350 days a year but the tight swings are insane down there you know like in yeah. the current yeah. cortez stuff yeah yeah well, we came back one night and it was too low to get back on the trailer oh, really? like we reversed the thing so far and the water just went like kind of flat instead of like having any sort of drop off so it didn't matter how far back you went <laughs> water was like out <laughs> and then it got to a point where you just couldn't drive on it anymore you know like the ground and stuff it was like kind of crazy oh, so we had to wait like two hours for the tide to come back <laughs> we're just sitting in the boat like did you camp you stayed a little like motel yeah, hotel? basically just like camping and stuff in a tent or there's like a trailer and park kind of thing oh cool yeah <laughs> it's kind of did bad. you eat any fish oh tons oh, yeah. you gotta oh, eat yeah. fish when you're mm-hmm. out there man it's like how can you? I know, I'm not no. sure I've ever seen you kill a fish. Me? Well, I do catch and release the majority of my <laughs> oh, stuff. Oh, you but should I see Randy fish. when he finds a white fish. Oh, yeah, I like white fish. Is, oh, delicious. Game. You got so over. good. Those, 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 put those they in the They make great pokey. They make, like, like, sashimi. I mean, yeah, sashimi and <laughs> ceviche. ceviche. Oh, so good. It's like, Ooh, yeah. But ceviche. when we were in the Sea of Cortez, what were we eating? The, uh, the hogfish. Hogfish. Ceviche is so good. Those mm. super bright colored ones? Mm-hmm. It's, like a, it's like, like a sheep's head. It they look very similar. Yeah. It's like same family, right? Similar. They're yeah. ugly but beautiful at the same time. Yeah, kind of like rats. a sheep's head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like everything in Baja tastes really good. Even All the fish trigger fish. Yeah. It's just hard to clean. They're hard to clean. Play. Hard yeah. to fillet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hard to get in there. Same with right. a sheep's head. Everything down there has big scales. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're tough. They're built tough down there for sure. That's cool. All right, so outside of the SoCal, the Baja fisheries, what are some fisheries that you guys want to mm. explore? Maybe some styles or things, areas. I want to fish freshwater stuff. Yeah, yeah more freshwater. Yeah. yeah, with the PK three especially. You yeah, know? like we we fish freshwater with all of our baits and caught on all of them. The five, seven, and the nine. I mean, not the jig, but five, seven, nine. But I just think the three will be so fun as far as uh, applications. Just opens it up. Mm-hmm. The rigging styles from drop shot to a rigs to lead heads and. However, weedless, you know. Underspin. Mm-hmm. Underspin, yeah. So I'm really excited to do some of that. Hopefully travel a little bit, something like that. Cool. Right I'd like to catch striper. It'd be kind of fun. That's that's kind of on my list. I think that'd be Like big swim really, baits for striper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A local striper would be fun. That's kind of cool, too. <laughs> yeah. It seems like they've been popping up a lot a handful more. On the five on the five inch, too. Yeah. There's yeah. a couple yeah. guys catching striper. Really? They're on mm-hmm. them, yeah. That's cool. Good ones. That's well, a hush, hush harbor fishery. spots. Yeah, I yeah. don't know the spots, but I just know they're like. Yeah, we can't give any names out. <laughs> just, <know>. just see <laughs> pictures. Yeah, some people have been getting. Well, speaking of your guys' baits in the freshwater, Nick Johnson, uh, fifteen light largemouth. Yeah, he oh, did yeah. catch a largemouth on it. I remember. He caught it like possible. a uh, like a five and a half pounder. Yeah. And he was like holding up the fish with like the jig and then his phone in the other hand. He like puts his phone in his pocket. We're fishing on a dock and the phone goes not in his pocket. <laughs> 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 oh. Right into so the, all the photos we have oh, wow. of that fish with the fifteen heavy. Is at the bottom of the lake oh, or the 15 light not the heavy so we just have to believe you mm-hmm. yep gotta trust <laughs> gotta trust <laughs> yeah it's cool seeing that crossover yeah, between different sure. species I, benny actually uh has fished the jig a handful of times in freshwater i remember hearing that like i've yeah, heard of like seven success. pound followers on the jig no and stuff. yeah 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 the um i know you guys make a bait and i don't know if it, this is in production the the booty spin yeah, mm-hmm. that's gonna be one one of our newer things that we're probably gonna end up making because we're making them ourselves right now. So we're probably gonna have like the factory do it. Um, yeah, so it's, just, a, it's a slow manual labor process at the it moment. It just takes time, you know. Yeah. And I used to paint all the jigs and like hook and ring them, and we had a friend that was doing all the welding. Um, and it just takes so much time. And 
I have, like I said, I have a full-time job and I'd rather be fishing than yeah. making lures, even though it's so fun. I love to do it. I loved like, you know, be all chilling in the garage and coming up with some weird colorways and, um, and just making it. It's so fun, but I'd rather be marketing and like having fun fishing, making the stuff. So it's like a balance as like a trade-off that I had to, you know, stop doing. Cause it's just don't, there's not enough time. That's yeah. All, hopefully you, know? you can so. keep building your team. You guys yeah, have a, yeah, a good yeah, core yeah. group around the brand. Yeah, we have and... a couple guys helping us out lately. Like, uh, you know, Lane Killian, he's mm-hmm. been helping a bunch. And Liam, when he can, even though he's a San Diego guy down here, but he's always calling in and, like, chatting it up with us. We have, you know, Vin Ninja Cowboy. So he, mm-hmm. they come over and they're always doing something, tweaking, making little customs, things that we can put up on our site, you know, just to, like, fish things the way we want to fish them and things like that. So Yeah, that's good. No, I also i have seen a couple of, like, a chatterbait. Mm. Yeah, modification was, to mm-hmm. a neck breaker yeah 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 is that something that like vin actually came up with that yeah and mm-hmm. he's, oh, god we were catching like really good large mouth with that really okay yeah, yeah. yeah just pk chatter or i think now they call it chatterbait because i think it's trademarked but oh is it bl- bladed jig? vibrating jig vibrating jig oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah it's one of those things where you, you can get in trouble you know it's vibrating jig. jig and a pk yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a good combo <laughs> that is a it's hard to resist yeah that is yeah that has some interesting <laughs> imagery associated <laughs> with the name <laughs> yeah. it's all very solid yeah. it'll probably sell well yeah it mm-hmm. does especially <laughs> the pink one you know? yeah what do they say sex sells so yeah. the, you've got the vibrating jig with the pickle kick right yeah oh good lord <laughs> i'm sold yeah. yeah perfect all right let's do it let's get some yeah i mean awesome. any cool. anything else you guys uh, have a dying need to to talk about the brand or just fishing in general dying we got it all covered i know we've been talking a lot about the brand yeah, yeah. all dialed yeah. in yeah oh i've got w- one question that some people might be interested because you guys spend you guys put so many days on the water just testing different things and stuff like that and so i'm sure you guys are particular about like all the gear you use so what's like a uh say like the go-to setups with rod reel line Mm -hmm. and kind of like the application for your guys' style because it's different from say a lot of other approaches you know gotcha yeah we get pretty technique specific with a lot of stuff but as far as the swim baits it's pretty standard i feel like eight foot seven and a half eight foot rods stout yeah yeah we like to win so we fish pretty heavy Mm -hmm. stuff you know like 400 size reels uh 300 size 400 size probably 300s more more so mm-hmm. but um <clears throat> 65 pound braid 40 to 60 pound top shots i'll even go up to 80 a lot weed this fishing you're moving it and like no shit yeah mm-hmm. you know it's sp- like no eat problem no nah, i don't i have no problem fishing it yeah wow. well sometimes like We've had times where they were like, like fishing calicos and they would eat the whole lure and they were their teeth were so sharp that you go to set the hook with 40 pound and it was like, mm-hmm. think, or like, so we started going to the island fishing 50 and 60 because we didn't want to lose these fish. You're you know? still getting bites and you're like, well, let's go heavier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, Skyler will fish a little lighter than I like to sometimes in certain aspects, certain, but, yeah. but not the island so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty heavy. Like I'm like 80 That's pound braid to like 50 or 60 pound top shot mm-hmm. for wow. sure. Because uh, I want to, I'm here to win, you know. Because when you hook that one fish, you don't, you don't want to lose. Especially sure. bycatch yellows too. Yeah, they eat the pickle kick like so and often now. Kelp. We found out, and like in the kelp, yeah. forty pound, you're gonna lose. Yeah, you know. Especially you if can only pull so hard when they're stuck in the kelp. You yeah, know? yeah. Do you guys have like a different setup for each application of of like bait you're gonna be fishing? Yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. we have like our you know surface iron rod. I'll throw a nine foot rod generally, um, just because you can only get so tight with your boat, you know? So you need to make those longer casts to mm-hmm. get those jigs way in there, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously those sets can come out of nowhere, which uh, yeah. you've learned, huh? It was fun taking him down to Ensenada because I mean, he was a little green on this type of fishing, you know? Yeah. So it was fun for us to like to do some teaching and for stuff. Sure. And then, I learned so much. And it was just, it was just like, you gotta, you know, you, you say it all the time, like, oh, you gotta, you know, stay safe and you always gotta be checking over your shoulder. It's literally within your, like your own, like, fishing cadence i don't know like your style like you're just, you'll be casting you'll whine take like three cranks and you look over your shoulder and then you like a couple more cranks you look over your shoulder and it's like something we're trying to teach him you know and then a couple of times we're like oh shit like let's get out like of we got to get out of here like literally and it happened like five or six times yeah. you know and that's like you know that's the kind of the fun part about it <laughs> in a way but because you know you're like you're not supposed to be there but you know that they're there and that kind of stuff but back to your question um yeah 
for the most part, the beefier the better. You know, I fish, mm-hmm. you know, for my weedless baits for the seven and the nine, I'm a 400, um, like Alexa 400 with, you know, 80 pound braid for sure. Uh, and cause yeah, the bike, that's what's awesome about the ocean is like the bike yeah. catches and the things that kind of happen. And when it's a certain time of year, it's like September through, you know, November, December, like these yellows will eat the weedless baits. Mm-hmm. And so we'll be drifting through the kelp. And normally when we get near the end, it's like, okay, yellows could get through. <laughs> and you kind of now we have, they taught us that in the last few years. It's kind of been like that because we've had these fish that you can't stop. They go, and they're just going straight through the kelp. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know? So the only way we've been able to ever get them is literally button down drag, which yeah. they still can pull the drag, which is insane because they're just the gnarly, they're gnarly fish. Yeah, right. And so, yeah, we've had where well, we had to just pull as hard as we possibly can. And, and we don't want the line to break, you know? So yeah mm-hmm. there's a lot behind it you know it's been a lot of fun like we, when we had nick and lane on like just again like m- myself learning about this whole bass yeah. fish it's yeah yeah like you guys are fishing heavier than I we fish are for tw- tuna fish, a lot of the times yeah. <laughs> i fish 25 pound for spotties no like way. on my on my pk fives because sometimes you got to set that hook because they're, they're in that grass okay so when they come up and they eat it like you you have to set the hook and pull them out of the grass that's why people probably lose a lot of fish because they can't get them out or they break off because they pull so hard because maybe I'm just so ripped, I pull that hard. But no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know, you you go to set the hook, and you have to go through the plastisol, and you have to get them out of that. You know, and I've had situations where I didn't set the hook hard enough, and I come back, my bait's all folded, and yeah. like it's full of grass, you know. And then I had mm-hmm. these things where I was like setting the hook harder, but then my line was like snapping. So I ended up eventually finding that uh, 25 pound Afco Psycho is what I use, you know. And yeah. To, I don't know. Like everyone's like six pound, eight pound. I'm like you're out of your mind bro. <laughs> yeah ricky I mean, and i were fishing like 10 or 12 pound for the yeah, most part yeah, in the bay I'm like what are you fishing well, fresh water bro I mean, yeah. Just <laughs> oh yeah well no it does make sense like it'd be the type of thing if you hook that one fish and you're near yeah. a rock near some grass you're yeah. probably not gonna land because well, i have fished 10 and 12 pounds stuff yeah. like that and i've i've just got like, cool. even the other day i was te- we were testing some pk3s and oh, we were yeah. catching some fish here and there and with the pk3 they eat the whole thing oh, almost yeah. every time and what was it, 20 or 25? It was on your yeah, setup. I think yeah. it was 25. Yeah. And felt a big bite come. It, like, picked it up. It started kind of swimming off with it. Like, pulled the rod down in my hand. Mm. Like, that's a good bite. Set and got tight and just gone. Like, you know, uh, so 20, 25, still breaking off on the hook set, you know. So teethy, those teeth, teeth, you know. Yeah, that's cool. So the PK3 has been... It's been it's fun inviting. testing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When's the, filming, what, what's stuff. the what's the tentative release date on that? Uh, PCS. Yeah. PCS. Which by the time you guys watch this, PCS will already happen, so they'll be live, already. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're hopefully, you already yeah. been on. Uh, but yeah, that's it's PCS. Um, you know, they just sort of, they just shipped from the factory, and they said in 22 days, and that was like two days ago. So hopefully, it's going to line up perfectly, right? So, uh, yeah. Cool, man. Well, yeah. Uh, I guess tell people where to find you after PCS and. Um, your socials and your website and we'll wrap yeah. this thing up well Randy Spicer my personal Instagram is R Spicer but I'd rather you follow Kicker Fishing <laughs> which is our Instagram and website and Facebook I guess if people use that still I don't know <laughs> um, I feel like even people my age don't even use Facebook anymore so there's that uh, yeah and Skyler you can find me on uh, Instagram at Catch Bass K-H-A-C-H hmm. Right on. <laughs> right. Epic. Thank you, guys. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah, well, yeah so appreciate you guys Fun coming down. It. We'll see you at PCS and uh, go visit the new storefront. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Epic. Right on. Cheers. Cheers. Hell yeah. Thanks, guys.